welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a fun tag video created by Vicky Vlogs. Now she is a smaller YouTuber and she created the tag called If I Owned a Makeup Brand and I thought this was so fun. I saw Teresa's dead do it and I just laughed so hard. So of course I had to do it myself. So thank you Teresa for the inspiration. Thank you Vicky for creating an awesome tag. I will link both of those videos in my description box as well as the questions. If you guys are interested in hearing what I have to say, just keep watching. Okay guys, so the first question is, what would you name your brand? Oh my God. What would I name my brand? I think I would probably name it like Savage or something. I mean, is is that copyrighted? Because I know Rihanna has like the Fenty Savage underwear line, but maybe like Savage makeup. Is that a thing already? <laughs> I don't know. I'm oh, what would I name my makeup brand? <sighs> Yeah, I think it would be like Savage Makeup. I like the ring to that. You know what I mean? Because I call you guys like my savages, <laughs> my makeup savages. We're working on that. Okay, the next question, what would your pricing be like? Luxury, high, mid, end, or drugstore? I think I would definitely be like a high-end brand just because that's the m makeup I like the most. So. I feel like that's the makeup I have the best luck with, so I feel like high-end would be where I'm at. Number three, what would the theme aesthetic be? Edgy, food theme, girly, etc. I feel like my brand would be a mix of, wow, I'm like really into grungy right now, so it could be really grungy. I love grungy colors and stuff like that right now. So I would say like grungy, but also girly. So like sparkly, but like grungy sparkles. And <laughs> uh, as I'm sitting here in my like white and pink sweater, um, but definitely like grungy, a lot of black, a lot of gold, a lot of white, a lot of gold, maybe some marble, you know, the huge. Okay, what would your color scheme packaging be like? I definitely feel like if it was like eyeshadow and stuff, I would love to just do cardboard, whatever is like sustainable, but definitely still cute because I feel like, you know, packaging's kind of like part of the experience when you're buying high-end makeup, so I definitely would want to have cute packaging, but I feel like it would also depend on the collection, like I wouldn't be tied to one idea forever, you know what I mean? If you had to compare yourself to an existing brand, who would it be? If I had to compare myself to an existing brand, I would say I'd be like Huda Beauty because I love her vibes. I love how she has like the grounding in the neutrals with her bigger palettes, but then she has like the fun, you know, like pops of color in her mini palettes. I love her lip products. She has all these cool innovative products. She's got a full line of foundation, concealer, powder. She's got everything. Like she's one of those brands where I could basically do a full face of Huda Beauty and I think that's really cool and I just love her. Again, like I said, she's got a little bit of edge. She's got a little bit of neutral. Like she is definitely me and a brand. Okay, how often would you release products? Good question. I think that as long as you have a great idea, as long as it's innovative, you should release it. I don't know that ColourPop necessarily is the way to go and then there are some brands it's like one hit wonders. So I wouldn't want to be that either. So I would say um, every couple of months you'd probably want to release something just to kind of stay relevant so people know you're there. Um, because, I mean, let's be real, the average makeup consumer is like a squirrel. We go from one shiny thing to the next shiny thing, and if you're not producing shiny things, then you kind of get left behind. That's just how it is, in my opinion. Okay, what do you want to be known for? Highlighter, eyeshadow, brushes, etc. I think I would have to be well known for eyeshadow because eyeshadow is my first love. Brushes would be fun too, just because I feel like there's not a lot of, like, 
affordable, fantastic brushes. Like, I really like Real Techniques, Eco Tools, things like that, but they don't have enough good eye brushes. So, I think there's definitely a spot for some affordable brush lines to get in to consumers, get into consumer hands. But I think eyeshadow for me is key because I just love eyeshadow so, so much. What would your number one eyeshadow palette launch look like? Well, <laughs> That's an interesting question. I think for me right now where I'm at, my current eyeshadow palette, if I were to launch one, would be a mix of Ace Beauté Vintage Dawn paired with Cleonade Stained Glass shadows. I am just like obsessed with Vintage Dawn's color story. It's 12 shades, but I just love the shades. It's like neutral enough for like the basic B inside me, but also it's like interesting enough where the colorful unicorn inside me also has a chance to play. And it's just like perfect for the season we're in. So definitely those shades. I love the navy matte blue. I love the olive green in there. I love the neutrals. Love all of that, and then all the fun, like, multi-chromes that Cleonade makes, I think just would pair so well with those shades. So, like, this whole bottom row, I could just see some shades like that kind of in my perfect palette, if that makes any sense to you guys. Okay, next question. Your dream collab and why? <gasps> Okay, so if I was a makeup brand and I got to collab with one YouTuber, I would have to say Angelica because her understanding of color is like unparalleled. I know there's a lot of other YouTubers that play with color and they do like the bold eyeshadow looks and things like that, but I don't know a lot of them and I'm not very familiar with a lot of their content. I've definitely watched YouTubers that are really, really good with color, so I'm not saying Angelica's like the only one out there, but she's somebody I know. I think she just speaks to my soul when I watch her videos, and so for that reason, I would pick her. Um, that's how I got into color is by watching Angie, and now, you guys, it's so crazy because if you give me a neutral palette, I'm like, not interested. <laughs> Like, there was a point where I was really into neutrals, and I was into neutrals and color. Now I'm just like, what palette do I pack? Not a neutral palette! Like, you know what I mean? So it's just funny to see that change happening in me, and I'm not complaining, I'm very excited. And I just feel like Angie would be the perfect person to collab with, because she has such unique ideas, and she's so incredibly creative. I've met her twice now in person and the second time when I met her I got to see one of her travel palettes and just to see the color she had picked out for herself it's like it really gives you like a glimpse into how her mind works and it's fascinating like she loves color. She lives for color so I yeah I would love if I was a makeup brand I would 100% choose Angie. Okay, how would you handle a scandal? I like that question. Oh my gosh, that's a tough one. So I feel like there's two ways to handle a scandal. You can like ignore it and most of the time it will go away unless it's something like really crazy. But even like the crazy stuff, it all blows over in the end. It's crazy. I recently watched a video between Luke Alexander, I think is his name, and Smokey Glow and they both did videos on YouTubers that can just get away with anything and a lot of these creators a lot of them that still keep doing Questionable things are people that just kept doing it and never stopped to like apologize think twice, etc, etc So I think maybe that could be an effective way to handle chaos Sometimes is like if you end up in scandal Just keep doing you because if you don't address it people don't have places to go and complain about it on your channel at least so the shitstorm will continue to circle out of your orbit but as soon as you address it you're opening yourself to you know be handed criticism um, the other way is probably how I would want to handle it although as a business owner it's a tough one because you have to think of revenue your employees can you afford it like you know, these candles, I mean, they've got to be expensive. <laughs> I always think of these things from my perspective because I do work for a small business and eventually I think we'll end up owning this business. So I just realize how much everything costs and it like blows my mind. Like, you know, how indie brands exist, I don't know because it's so expensive to 
own any kind of brand, let alone a makeup brand. And when the competition is so fierce, like I don't know. But I think the best thing is always to kind of admit when you make a mistake, apologize, you know, try to rectify it as best as you can. I think that's always important. So if you need to recall something, recall it. If you need to issue a refund, refund people. Like do your best to make it right for customers. Hopefully people won't take advantage of you, but I mean, I feel like, you know, customers are savages too. Like sometimes they, you know, are very much out to get people and it's true, like it, it really is. And that's okay. I'm not criticizing anyone or pointing any fingers, but as a brand owner, your reputation is the most important thing. So you do what you need to do to safeguard that. Other than that, I think kind of like giving it time is important. Letting people, you know, get frustrated and move on at their own pace is important. I don't think you should go from like scandal to new product release. I think that was like one of the big things I didn't love about like Jacqueline Hill, for example. I think she should have given it a year at least before she came out with the highlighters. I feel like the stink of the lipstick scandal has not gone away yet fully. And I just feel bad for the highlighters because they should have had their own moment and she didn't give it enough time. She didn't really address anything and then she just went on with her, her life. And I feel like that will always follow her brand around now because she just didn't give it enough time. And I still can't understand why she pushed the highlighters so quickly. I think other than it being the holiday season and them wanting to take advantage of your wanting to buy stuff, I can't imagine the timing. But uh, yeah, that's how I would handle it. Hopefully I answered that question okay. Okay, next question. How would you distribute PR? Honestly, the PR thing is so tough because I know how important PR is for influencers. If I was a small brand, I think it would be so hard because again, I think of the bottom line, the expense of PR, it's so, so expensive. I think as a brand owner, what I would try to do is kind of have my own channel and try to promote my products on my own. I think it's so easy to do that for yourself if you're really interested in makeup. A lot of indie brands that I see, I wish I knew more about the owners. Like that's something I really, really would love to see more indie brands do. So I would wanna do that is put myself out there as the owner of the brand. I know it's hard because again, you're opening yourself up to criticism and I'm sure people have bad things to say all the time. Like, oh, I can't believe that person thinks they can own a makeup line, blah, 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 blah. So I think that kind of stuff is important. As far as PR goes, I know there's so many people. I still remember one time I caught Glamlight's owner. She did a live about PR and she's like, People that don't even have a single post about makeup on their Instagram want to get on the glam light PR list. And I'm like, those are the people that want to ruin it for everyone else. And it's like, if you don't genuinely post about makeup, if you're not an influencer, like, why are you trying to get on PR list? Like, that doesn't even make sense. So as a brand owner, I would definitely try and do my research. I know it's hard because... Most of the time it's very small. They don't have a lot of resources to, you know, dedicate to being, you know, having a PR person, blah, 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 blah. That only comes when you're big. The business I help run, we are probably in a couple of millions a year. It's not big by any means, but I can't imagine, like we can't afford a PR team. Like not even close. So, you know, it's hard. I totally understand that and I think you know, it is a brand's responsibility to make sure they're sending PR to people that are on the same page as them. But also, I don't always blame brands for the way influences behave. And sometimes they may make a mistake and send the PR to a person that's undeserving. So I think it's also up to us as a beauty community to make sure that we're not just taking, taking, taking from brands, especially small brands. I don't really care about like big brands. I'm talking about like the indies of the world. Like if you get something, be grateful. I'm just going on a tangent now, so I'm gonna stop. But as a for PR, I've always thought that it would be fun to do some kind of, instead of sending product out, what I would like to do is either pay for reviews. So if somebody reviews something and they like send it to me, and I like the video, I would like give them, you know, some kind of compensation or some product or like a future discount on 
purchases or maybe I kind of like the links where it's like if their video people watch it and they go shop that product through their link then you know they would kind of receive some kind of affiliate I like that idea but I don't love always like people getting free product and then hoping that an influencer will make a video I don't love that idea I don't know how brands can afford that all the time especially if I was a small indie brand but I think those are kind of my top ideas for PR would be to see if I can compensate after the fact or if I can have organically people kind of finding my brand and reviewing it for themselves or trying it for themselves without being influenced by having stuff sent if that makes any sense at all. Okay and then the last question would you rather be sold at Ulta or Sephora? So um, because I'm a high-end brand, I would love to be sold at Sephora. I think Sephora is just the experience of a Sephora to me is very much part of, you know, makeup. I think it is, it's just a different vibe at Sephora. I love the black and white aesthetic. I feel like the sales associates typically at a Sephora know a little bit more about makeup than Ulta, but... You know, sometimes I don't really even go into Ulta stores, so I definitely go to Sephora's more, so I feel like maybe I'm just a little more biased. And also our Ulta hires a lot of like seasonal workers, and then I'm just like, you know that meme that says like, I know more than you? <laughs> it's such a bitchy meme, but it's so accurate. That's exactly how I feel sometimes when people try to like talk to me about product, I'm like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Can I go now? <laughs> so, I don't know. I think Sephora, I love the vibe. I love the bougie of Sephora. Mm, I know people like the Alta points, but whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna be a Sephora bish. <laughs> I, I think I would just love to be sold at Sephora because that's, that's kind of where my love of makeup blossomed into the um, ridiculousness that it is now. Okay guys, that is everything for this video. Like I said, I will go ahead and leave the original video as well as Teresa's video down in my description box so you guys can enjoy those videos after you watch this one. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys!